If a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush, then what is a carved bird in the hand worth? To a Greenville man, his one-time hobby has taken on a value he never expected. Here's Gene Mackin with the story of an artist whose way with wood has taken wing. When you start with the block of wood, the bird is in there. You just have to release all the wood that's around the bird. It comes naturally to Jim Hilton, there in his workshop, lit by whatever light wafts through the window. He is a recreator of bird life. I used to be an industrial arts teacher, and I saw a piece of wood that was just hanging around for several years, a big block of wood, and I purchased it from the school and just started carving away, and I ended up making a whale. That was my first attempt. At 40 years old, Jim had a new hobby. He sought advice from admired New Hampshire wood carvers. They asked him to bring in birds for critiques, and Jim has never swayed. Since I've been carving birds for almost 18 years, I think I'll stay in the bird carving field. This is a piece of tupelo down here. It's a rather large piece. It's very light wood. I purchased it from Louisiana. I actually have to send to Louisiana for it. Or sometimes at bird carving competitions, there'll be vendors there and they'll have the wood for sale. So I'll purchase a piece of wood. You notice it's very straight grain. No knots are in it. And that's the way carvers like to see it. This award-winning carver welcomes us into his woodworking shop in Greenville to watch as blocks of wood take flight. Usually I find a picture or a photograph, something I like about the pose of a particular bird. The bird will attract my attention and I'll gather all material on that bird. I get the exact size of it using Peterson's guidebook so I know approximately what size the bird is. Then I'll lay out the particular pose that I want on a block of wood. And then I go down to a place in Townsend called a settle shop where I used to work. And they allow me to get down there and I rough things out on a bandsaw. And I start carving. I find that I can do this by hand better than by the machine because by being able to do it this way, I get a good feel of whether the bird is coming out some kind of symmetrical. I also have a picture here that I've cut out of the head, the actual size of the head of a falcon. And what we're going to do is begin cutting it out. I've laid some of the detail out of the beak, so I know I have to remove some of the material so I can begin to take shape. Constantly checking to make sure I'm straight coming down there. All the tails are always curved on the bird, so I'll always curve them down. Now it starts smoothing them out. I'm gonna use a Dremel tool here. Hundreds of birds have been born from the wood so patiently and so precisely whittled in Jim Hilton's hands. This is going to be a golden wing wobbler. I start is Creating a smaller creature can fill 25 to 40 hours. A larger species, more than 300. I started with the smaller birds, but then I've grown to the bigger ones. I do have a fondness. I do like to do larger ones. I find it easier to work, and I do happen to like raptors, which are birds of prey, such as your eagles and your hawks, osprey, things like that. And I just am fascinated with what they were able to do and how they survived in the wild. Jim has a gift, not only in shaping the birds, but bringing their complex colors and textures to life. This is all by trial and error. I just learned my way through. I use either acrylics or I use oil paints. This particular bird that I'm doing now, I'm using acrylics and you apply the paint several wash coats. Don't just put it on in one piece. You gotta take several wash coats so that you can build up the intensity of whatever it is that you're painting. These particular feathers on this woodcock have several different colors in them in one feather. 
There's a little bit of tan in here. There's a dark brown. Then there's actually some gray streaks in there as well. So it takes a while building up different colors. Just keep building up the intensity here. Jim's craft can be found perched in shops from Camden and Bar Harbor, Maine to the Peterborough Fine Arts Center. They're worth $100 to more than $1,000. And Jim is often commissioned to carve. This particular woodcock that I'm doing right now, though, is for a place called Timber Doodle. It's a hunting lodge. They asked me to do a woodcock for them. And they actually had some stuffed woodcocks, so they allowed me to take the woodcocks that, I, that they have right here. They're enclosed in glass, and so that I can get these as accurate as I can. And as he carves and paints and gives life to winged wonders, Jim says he's found a personal peace there under the soft shower of sawdust that rains in his Greenville workshop. I find a great amount of relaxation from doing it, being able to get away from just thinking about other things that I've done during the day and concentrating on that. And it's rewarding to um, step back from a bird once you've carved it and just look at the pose that you have as you look at your reference material and see how close you've actually come to the bird itself and then begin painting it. And then when you're done, certainly it is a rewarding thing to see something that you're satisfied with what you've done. Coming up tomorrow on Chronicle, meet... Hey, hey, you and Pete moving in together, it's a big deal. Yeah, it's great, isn't it?